Yo, what's good guys? Happy Monday. Hope you're all having an amazing start to your week. Today we have a trade recap. Haven't done one of these in like so long. But anyways, we have a trade recap I took on the Pound Yin, GJ, as some people know it. <laughs> um, a trade I took, I believe, last week or two weeks ago. Um, I'm just going to break down the technicals and a uh, little bit of the fundamentals but mainly uh, technicals because a lot of people wondered how I knew to enter there. It was sort of a sniper entry. There is no sniper entries, guys. There's no magic. So I'm going to break it down, the trade, why I got in, and uh, how I managed it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So with that being said, if you aren't already, please subscribe. And uh, if you don't, follow me on Instagram. And if you gain any value from this video, give it a thumbs up. But let's not waste too much of our time. Let's hop over to the charts and take a look at the trade. Yo, what's up, guys? So the camera is on, and here is the trade. This is a trade I took. I think it was about a week or two ago. It was a GJ long, and I caught it on this wick right right there. Um, and this is uh, where I took partial profits. I didn't full TP here. But uh, it came in reversed and took me out of break even after this point. But it was a nice 270 uh, pips, risk reward 2.8. Um, so yeah, guys, it was a great trade. And essentially, let's let's break it down, right? There's no magic, there's no special anything to catch this wick. Um, yeah, th there's no secrets here. So I'm just gonna break it down and. Once I break it down, you'll probably be like, oh, shoot, okay, that makes sense um, why you got in there. Because I want to debunk the myth that there's anyone that just has special abilities or, you know, special knowledge that, no, there's no, there's none of that, right? Everyone's looking at the same charts using the same tools. It's just a matter of how you use them, right? So, uh, yeah, let's break down why, when, uh, how I got into this trade. All right, so here is what the chart looked like before I got into the trade. Fundamentally, there was some risk off sentiment, um, aka uh, money going into the safe haven, uh, which is the yen, <clears throat> which is causing GJ to go down. So I knew that. However, fear oftentimes um, you know, dies down pretty quickly, especially in the market conditions that we're in. And so I was looking for a long trade. I was looking for a long trade and, um, yeah, so I was, I was looking to take this long somewhere, right? And <clears throat> so let's look at the, the, the technicals, cause that's basically all for the fundamentals, right? The pound was neutral. The yin, I was expecting a risk off flows to die down. And because of that, GJ would head higher, <clears throat> right off the, you know, the back of uh, poten potential risk on flows, which would drive money out of the safe haven, the yin, and uh, cause GJ to go higher, right? So I was looking to take this long for that reason. Now, technically, so what did I use to get into this trade? <clears throat> Let's take a look. We had this, uh, you know, zone here. If you take a look here, we had this nice zone, right? Um, it did bounce here off of the zone, <clears throat> but if you look at my other confluences we're about to get into, um, it made more sense to get in actually at the bottom area, uh, the bottom uh, range of liquidity for this zone, right? So we had that confluence. We had a zone. Next up, I drew two fibs. We have this one here off of this last leg. Um, really massive move up. And the 21 fib level was sitting right there. On top of that, if we draw it from there all the way down here, we had this 32 or 38.2, also in the same area. All right, so now that we had those things, um, it's pretty clear that there's a strong, uh, nice buy area in in this region here. 
let me just make that purple so you can see it better so we had a nice area here to, to go long right with the bottom area of liquidity for the zone two fib levels so what was the final uh, confluence that gave me um, you know confidence to get in at that point essentially it's one of my favorite tools out there moving averages so let me put on uh, the moving averages so as always I use the 50 100 200 and you can see the 200 was right there the 200 is always going to be stronger than the 100 the 100 is going to be stronger than the 50 the 50s in green, 100s in red, <clears throat> 200 is the dark blue. So we had that moving average, good confluence, but there was one last confluence, and it was another moving average. It was um, on the daily chart, actually. So um, <clears throat> here I have a um, moving average indicator that puts the daily moving averages, so on the daily chart, uh, the 50, 100, 200, it just puts it onto the four hour and one hour time frames. <clears throat> and the reason this is useful is because I don't have to switch over to the daily, which I rarely look at. I can just um, have all that information on the four hour and one hour charts. So let me turn that on. <clears throat> I often get asked what these things are because it does look kind of silly. Um, and the reason the moving averages look like you know like stairs kind of is simply because they are daily moving averages so what that means is it updates only once every single day so in a 24 hour period it only gonna it's only gonna move once so that's why it, it looks like a stair stepper right because it's one whole day and then updates one whole day updates one whole day updates whereas these if we just turn this off for a second um, these don't look like that because they update a lot more frequently right so anyways that's um, that's that and so we had if we turn off all this other stuff right here right at that cluster we also had the 50 the 50 um, moving average right so let's go on the daily let me show you um, this is the 50 this is the 100 this is the 200 let's look on the daily chart and boom you can see um, it's in the same exact place and the 50s right there so we were looking to take this long from that point cool so that's it that that was the 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 confluences right at this area so like I said there is no magic to this there is no secret um, and yeah it, it's just using the tools properly so uh, how did I actually manage this trade so I got in you know right right at the top area of this little box I got in right there and my stop I would like to have put it below this last low right Get, give the trade you know some room but that's 180 pips and that's a little bit too much so I just put it uh, at like 100 pips um, just slightly below um, kind of this this area is where I put it right so um, 100 pip stop and my target was actually um, this extension level this first extension level was my main target right so pretty crazy trade 8 to 1 however this was a long shot right this was a long shot a lot of things would have to line up fundamentally uh, for it to move like that I knew right that it's a long shot but that's what that was my final TP um, and I had a smaller TP or I guess I should say my first one at uh, this area right because this is a solid area for uh, was support then acted as resistance and I figured it would probably act as resistance again and so that was uh, my first um, TP area Second TP area would be this area here. Uh, third would be you know this this high, and then of course uh, this last one, right? So I would take some partials along the way, see what happened. Um, but even the first TP area is you know over two to one risk reward, so that fulfills that requirement. 
um, even if it just gets to there. So, so yeah, this is this was my plan essentially. Let's look and see what happened. We did get triggered into the trade. Beautiful rejection. Beautiful rejection, and um, yeah, from there it zoomed to our first TP area. All right, so I took some partial profits, took some off. Um, and then at that point, I would move my stop loss to break even. And at that point, it's you just let the trade do its thing, right? You already have profits. You can't lose any money. You already made money on the trade because um, it stops at break even, and you took partial profits off the table. So really, all you have to do now is just wait. Does it hit the second TP area? Um, does it hit the third? Or does it stop you out? And so once I saw... Um, a bit of consolidation right in this area on the one hour um, I actually changed my bias to short so I did short right about here but um, yeah as in terms of this trade uh, yeah it, it, that was basically it got stopped out at break even yeah so anyways it was a solid trade uh, cannot complain 270 pips um, but yeah that's the technicals behind it a lot of people always wonder when you get in on a wick you know dang like what does this guy know that I don't know you know um, is it some crazy knowledge secret thing no dude that doesn't exist in my opinion um, at least in the retail forex niche there's no secrets it's cut your losers, you know, cut your losers very quick. Um, hold on to your winners as long as you can. Um, you know, don't do not do less than one-to-one -one risk reward, at least, if not two-to-one. And get a solid system with solid rules. Master it, and you'll be fine. There's no secrets. And in terms of the entries, again, there's no secrets. You're just, you know, matching up confluences using tools to find a good entry point that's it guys so um that's about it for this trade recap that's really all it included that was the trade um and yeah so yeah guys um let me know what you think in the comment section down below um you know about this trade or any trading related questions you have um but yeah guys peace